Hello family, it's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your November 2022 reads. What's up big baby? How have you been? I have missed you oh so dearly. I hope you had a great Halloween. I hope that you um, enjoyed yourself and got lots of candy. You and your children had a great time. And if you celebrated Dia de los Muertos, I pray that it was a very beautiful time. I got to enjoy my, um, my ancestral time also. So with that being said, if you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should like a run on over there and follow me at Arena Luciano. No numbers, no underscores, nothing like that. Just Arena, all right? Arena Luciano. Very easy. Now... With that being said, if you're a returning family member, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so excited to be with you guys again. Let's let's go into the lineup, okay? So the lineup is going to be a very brief overlook at like the energies happening astro astrologically, okay? Or in the heavens, however you want to look at that. These energies will tie into the reads. However, with that being said, remember, we are in eclipse season and we're trucking it along to 2023, big baby. And if you're interested in it, 2023 reading hit me up on my link tree all right now these are going to be very brief descriptions and then when we will break it down into the elements the elements will get an oracle read we will start there and then break it down into each sign each piece connects to the other but guess what i know you ain't got a lot of time baby so you can just hit that time stamp all right now with that being said let's talk about what's going on november 5th and 2022 baby Venus is in Scorpio, 13 degrees. 13 comes down to a what? A four. We are like, who we want in our house? What? This is cuffing season, boo. Who you cuffing up with? Who you snuggle bunning up with, right? These are our values and our compassions, right? What are we compassionate about? What do we desire? And that is being... Um, opposed by Uranus and Taurus at 14 degrees, 14 degrees, 14 comes to a five. We want to change something, okay? We're trying to learn the balance. We want to be cuffed. We want our freedom, but we want it to be freaky deaky. We want this. And so we're going through what it is that we truly want to move to the next level. November 6th, we go into Venus and Scorpio. Venus uh, is squaring Saturn and Aquarius. We're realizing something is just not right. Like there's no balance. There are things that are not making sense. And we want things to change. Venus and Scorpio is this energy of like diving deep in your loves, your desires, your passions. Okay. Squaring Saturn is a challenge to the rules you might have imposed on yourself or that of the collective. Okay. Now. Don't be surprised if we have some like break break news like this whole like November. There's going to be a lot of um, things being exposed. OK, people being exposed, the government being exposed, things like that. I have to watch what I say. Anyways, be ready for exposure. OK, <laughs> now on the 8th, this is a very important day. OK, write it down, circle it, take a damn dirty picture because this is a full moon and total lunar eclipse. All right. 16 degrees Taurus. All right. Taurus, we want to get things started stable 16 for me i'm going to break it down this way one is the individuality right six for me is passions joy art you know tying back to the past a little bit but we're going to combine those numbers to get the number seven for me it's a divine message from above right so we're getting these divine messages these powerful dreams inclinations intuition is on point and things are being revealed okay things are this is a whole month of revelations okay um, I feel like everybody is getting called out. Every If you lied, if you did something wrong, exposed. Okay, so watch what you're doing behind people's backs. Now, also on the 8th, we have something very beautiful. We have um, Mercury. Oh, my notes. Sorry. Mercury is Kazemi. Kazemi. Again, 16 degrees. So when Mercury is Kazemi, it's right by the heart of the sun, but it's in the sign of Scorpio. So Scorpio rules the eighth house. This is those intimate, very lots of intimacy, deep darkness, hard, like hard emotions, not bad, hard emotions. Like we're really bringing everything out. We're really getting that out. Okay. Now on the ninth, the sun is in Scorpio opposite Uranus and Taurus. Big news, big revelations and big changes. This is just what I feel. Okay. Now. On the 9th, we also have Mercury in Scorpio, square Saturn in Aquarius. 
Mercury and Scorpio wants to talk about it, okay? We want to talk about what's going on with the rules, the regulation. Why are you, you know, putting that on me? Why are you putting that on the collective? There is a lot of decisions about changes that need to be made. We are living in a very exciting time, to say the least, all right? Now, the 11th, one of my favorite days, because this is the day that my oldest daughter was born, November 11th, okay? I always tell her she's my 11-11 blessing, and it's Veterans Day, so to all my veterans out there, my dad, happy Veterans Day, TT. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for helping us to get to where we've been. Blessings on you and your families. Now, Sun and Scorpio on that day, okay, square Saturn in Aquarius. There's a lot of squares to Saturn. Saturn is big daddy. He rules the sky. He's the one. He's the hot boss hog in charge, right? In Aquarius is for the collective. There is a lot of talk about the rules, regulations, and laws that need to change. And you can even take this into your own life and say, what needs to change in my life and how do I move forward, right? Now, on the 15th, we kind of shift our gears a little bit. Venus, you know, like little Venus talking about love, okay? I'm ready for some love. It enters into Sag, and it's like quick, fast, and in a hurry. Hi, Sagittarius, with your sexy thighs, you know, okay? On the 17th, now Mercury is like, wait, Venus, I want to come with you, girl. I want to come with you. And he enters into Sag. So we want to talk about love. We want to talk about having fun. We want to enjoy ourselves. We want to be around family and friends and have joy and happiness again we're tired of kind of having to be exposed to so many different things and we're just wanting that closeness again now on the 19th uh, Mars is in Gemini square Neptune and Pisces Gemini with let's talk about it Mars is like let's talk about it okay but Neptune and Pisces is, is a little bit of like ooh, you know this I'm gonna tell you be careful with gossip um, if you think someone's lying, they probably are. There's a lot of deceit in the air that day. Do not say anything behind someone's back because they're going to find out because we're still being exposed, okay? So this is not a great time to do those kinds of things. It's also a good time to speak from your heart. If you want to put it out there, put it out there, okay? Don't beat around the bush. Now, Mercury is conjunct Venus, six degrees of Sagittarius on the 21st. Mercury, the planet of communication, is right next to Venus at the number six, all right? So they want to talk about it, be about it, and have a good time, okay? And on the 22nd, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sag. If you want to celebrate, I love to party. <laughs> People are like, no, you need to stop partying. I know, but I do in Sagittarius. Like, I will have a, we will have a blast, okay? Now, on the 23rd, Jupiter goes direct 28 degrees Pisces. Let's break down the number 28. Two, partnerships, relationships, um, polarities, things that need to be into balance. The number eight, I always think of abundance, travel, communication. We combine those two numbers together, we get the 10. The one plus the zero, the one tells us there's a new beginning and that zero amplifies it, okay? It amplifies that one. So this is like a wonderful time to start over, a great time. And think about Jupiter, he's king of the gods, right? And he rules Pisces and Sagittarius and he is in his little place of happiness right now. He rules knowledge and expansion and we want the clarity and this is like the joy like the ah, like that aha moment that's what this is so with that being said happy birthday Sagittarius call me if you're a Scorpio and you haven't celebrated yet call me so make sure that you go show love to all your Scorpios and Sagittarius's happy Veterans Day if you want a reading from me the only way to book guys and I'm gonna have some specials running in November and December for the new year all right I will be getting some new year readings out too as soon as I get some time off um, with that you can only book through my link tree but if you don't follow me on Instagram come on over let's have a great time and let's chat all right stay tuned for the reads Hello, Aries. Hey, Aries. Leo. Hey, lovely Leos. And sexy Sagittarius. How are you guys doing? I hope you're having a fantabulous month so far. We're going to jump into your reading. This is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus if you're listening for love. So let's start off with your ancestor message for this month. This is your oracle read. This is about going on a journey within the soul, really looking to see what it is, what you want, desire, 
your expectations. And no, it doesn't have to be for 2023 only. What do you really want? Who are you? What do you represent? What makes you you? Like you're really like having like a dark night of the soul right now. Things are coming into balance for you. And I do think that being alone, like having that alone time will be good for you. Sitting out in the sun if you can, okay? If you can, I know some places it's really difficult, would be good to feed your spirit and soul. Your ancestor message also is that of the badger. And I feel like the badger is coming in because people have mistaken your kindness for weakness over the years. And it, you've built up this sense of having to hide behind a beautiful smile, a joke, a laugh. When you really want to say that hurts. I can't believe that happened. And, and I think this is the month you find your voice. With the eclipses and with the Mars retrograde, depending how it's hitting your chart, fire sign you're really starting to look at yourself and say wow i want to grow i want to develop i want to be a better version of me but in order to be a better version of you you have to find all the things that make you you right so there's been a lot of growth and development in these fires and our us fire signs but it doesn't mean that we don't have more work to do shadow work is never finished you never like finish right that's part of the evolution of us and shadow work is not bad shadow work is not sitting there and pulling yourself apart it's about looking at your aspects and saying how can I make this better how how can I love myself at these moments in time because I'm not meant to be perfect for instance I'll use myself I get very worked up really fast and then I'm done but I've had to learn to control that to realize that my words hurt and that, that the things that I say can't be taken back and I might have to say I'll be right back and then really get my words together and then say what I need to say. I've had to learn to control myself when I'm angry, you know, because I am like a little honey badger at times. But those are the things that we need to start working on. It's like really looking at ourselves. What are we denying about our behaviors? What is the shadow back there? Why can't you love the inner you, you know? Why don't you love your inner child that threw a fit because it didn't get its way? It's throwing its fit because it's telling you it doesn't like something. And so you have to sit with, why don't I like this? What would I prefer? And how can I get there, right? So it's about growth. And in this, it's about having the magic of compassion, not just for everybody, guys, but for ourselves. We have to start treating ourselves with empathy, with compassion, and understanding that we're a human being. We don't have all the answers. We're gonna make mistakes. And when we give ourselves that grace that we can have bad days, guess what? We're more able to give others that grace that maybe they're having a bad day kind of vibe, right? Now, with that, the planet that wants to come in is the moon because it's going to shine all of our emotions, guys. The moon is showing up in the 10th house for us. This is just, this is not your chart, okay? The 10th house represents your, um, your MC, like the way you show up in the world in business and career, okay? So this talks about defending yourself responsibly, accepting how successful you are, and letting your feelings tell you how to become a better person of power and status. A lot of fire signs are moving up, okay? You're getting noticed, recognized. Now, it's also telling you to nurture your destiny, know where you're going, and understand your career, okay? Understand where you're moving in your career. Your crystal is that of the diamond who's getting married and engaged because I want to come party, okay? So, one of the few stones that never requires recharging. It symbolizes abundance, innocence, and purity. And while shining the light on all is dark, all that is dark and negative, it's also been used to bond relationships. But beware. As the diamond holds no loyalties and will enhance negative as well as positive power of the mind, guys. So you have to make sure to keep your thoughts pure. It brings courage and transformational energies. Now it's a healer of the sight problems. It um, gives you clarity and brings peaceful sleep. So I need diamonds so I can sleep well, right? <laughs> and on a spiritual level, the light will soon illuminate your way forward. Are you ready to make the necessary changes to become the you who you need to be? Your Akashic card is the Seven of Roses, another journey, whether it's a journey within, but I feel like there's a lot of travel coming in for you. Don't be surprised if you're asked to go on a major trip overseas, um, definitely over water. This is a big trip. This is also about psychic, intuitive things coming to you. That could be the clarity of the diamond also. That's why you're going to go to the, the parts that you're like having the struggle bus to care about yourself. You're not being very compassionate to yourself. And therefore, since you're not being nice to yourself, you have issues sometimes being nice to others because you're like, well, nobody's being nice to me. Why should I care? You know, but if you're being nice to yourself, 
yourself, guess what? You're a little bit more nicer to others. So, let's see here. I'm not saying be a doormat, though, because I'd be real quick to tell somebody something. Let's see the energy for us, guys. All right? Let's give this a couple of shots. Oh, we didn't do our question. Hold on. Let me get the cards for our question. Okay. Yes or no questions. We will be using the Starman Tarot. Let's give it a good shuffle. I was already jumping into it. I have to go pick up my daughter from school. Okay, two questions in your mind. All right, so overall, I have the magician looking at me. Okay, this is a very creative endeavor. We got everything we need to move forward, but is it the right choice or decision? So for question number one, I have the Eight of Cups, and that's going to be a no, friend. I do not think you should proceed. I think that you have too many things going on. We got some dynamite over here. We got something hidden in this closet. You know, there's so many things. We're so overwhelmed. This, this cup is frozen. I almost feel like, no, we should not move forward with this decision. We don't have enough information. He looks very confused and perplexed about what he wants. And even though we have everything to, we need to be successful, we need to wait for the Nine of Cups so that we can move forward. All right. Card number two, we have another no. This is the Ten of Swords, and this fits into not being authentic with yourself, being torn in two, meaning like you do one thing, but you're saying another, or vice versa. And there's also this energy of not feeling like it's the right time. So I get a no for that one, too. All right, let's go back to our shuffle. Let's see what's going on for the collective. And then we'll break it down into the signs, okay? And we're ready. So we have Aries. Leo, hey Leo, Sag, ooh, Sag, I see you over there, getting ready for your birthday, I love it, all right, Princess of Cups, there's an offer on the table, are you going to take it, I don't know, so let's see here, all right, we are Queens of Swords, we are cutting it up, all right, we are on the chopping table, we are ready, we are ready to make some really intense decisions as we move forward. Some are going to be legal decisions or decisions about marriage. We're ready to get to the next level. We're ready to finalize items and finalize deals. We have the magician. Some of y'all have some court issues going on the way this looks to me. There's something with court. It's going to be okay. The three of wands is telling you, you have, you have everything you need right where you're at. Some of y'all will be signing a contract for a new home or a new house. Now, as we wipe the slate clean, we're moving forward, we're reliving our dreams. This is the Genesis card in the beginning. The fire signs decided to wipe the slate clean and do what needed to be done. And we're going to learn how to ask for help. We're not doing it by ourselves because the wheel is moving us in the direction to get new offers, new things coming to the forefront and better opportunities. So with that being said, we are going to jump into the signs. Hello, my lovely Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, if you're listening for love. How are you guys doing? What's going on? What's new? What have you been up to? So this is going to be a very interesting read. We immediately start off with two spirit guides coming in to bring in a new beginning. I don't know what you're doing, Leo. I don't know what's new. I don't know what you've been up to, but you are done with the, you're done with the shenanigans, okay? You're accepting all the spiritual help, all the assistance on the earthly realm, all of everything. And you're like, let's do it. Let's wipe the slate clean in love and finances. And I've made my choice. I'm moving on and moving up. Okay, so we're gonna do this read. We're gonna look at what this Princess of Cups is offering. We're gonna go with the Witch's Tarot to clarify. We're going to put, oh, the Deviant Moon Tarot over here. Didn't want to be used and they got mad at me. What? So let's see here. What is the Princess of Cups offering? Because that's the overall energy you guys have. What is the offer she has for Leo? The Chariot, Travel, Movement, Major Victory. Moving on, moving away, moving forward. Balance with that black and white energy right there. Knight of Swords, quick movement, quick development. I feel like you're moving away from a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or someone who is very cunning with the tongue, okay? <laughs> they got lots to say. And here's the Queen of Wands. You're sitting on your throne. You've got your victory. You're owning it. And you know that someone is coming after you or something's coming after you and you don't have time for it. 
because you want your divine match. You know who your match is. You know what's going on. You know who you want to partner up with. You remember like when you were little and like PE and they would be like, hey, choose your partner. Leo's like, you're mine, right? Like you're it. And someone's like, pick me. And you're like, mm, I'm good. What does this mean over here? Financial issues are going to be a thing of the past. You've got to move away from that quick moving energy and develop better things, okay? Okay. Because it's bringing you anxiety. So I also want to say people who are coming after you for financial assistance, always asking you for help, that has to end too because you have to move on and take care of yourself, okay? A lot of people have been asking you, Leo, for help, like financially draining you. It could be a Cancer. It could be a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But the answer is no. Mm-hmm. Chanel, all right? So then we're going to move on over. This is where it's going to get a little interesting because I said you have two spirit guides. So the Carob of Cups is very significant because he has the pine cone, right? And he's clearing. He's clearing your third eye so that you can see things. And the cups represent emotions, love, and feelings. So I'm going to do something different. I might go to the Nahuali book to get more insight in case I get something that I don't, I don't know how to explain very well. But we're going to use the Nahuali deck to see what kind of spirit guide is coming forth for us. The Scarlet Macaw, card 32. All right, Scarlet Macaw, Macaw, this is like soulmate energy for me. Like, they have got to clean your love life up because you got to make room for um, a Scarlet Macaw. <laughs> you got to make room for your love, baby. Don't let your boyfriend hold you up from your husband. I'm just kidding. But this is about the Phoenix rising, a resurrection. I'm telling you, there is new things on your horizon. So this is tied to the vol the um. The Macaw was the vo volatile of the goddess Chalmaktukuli, the sacrificer. Okay, so this is the phoenix rising, all right? And it centers around rebirth. And the Scarlet Macaw, Macaw appears in readings when you've lost your way. And it's time to transmute. It's time to transform. It's like, do you know who you are? And what's so interesting, look. Look how they're kind of like looking in the same direction. The beak, they're like, no looking back, Leo. We're moving on. You have grown. You've developed. Damn dirty, Leo. You got it going on. So this is a very fearsome deity. And in the Egypt um, counterpart is a scorpion goddess, Sirket. Okay? So when a sacrifice has been made with a willing heart, the appearance of the scarlet macaw is almost always a favorable omen. This is the yardstick upon which you can judge what the omen means to you. So a lot of times when we look at these things, this is time to reset your dreams. There's also things with color therapy when parents show up. Know when to be quiet, and this is about love and friendships. And so as you're moving forward, this energy is coming in and saying, look, there's too many people pulling on you, Leo. You're not focused on your goals, your dreams, your aspirations. So we're going to do a rebirth. We're going to remove people from your life. We're going to reset you, and we're going to keep going. Be prepared for this eclipse to show you who's really there for you, okay? Let's do a pick a card. What does the Scarlet Macaw want to bring to you? What is it <laughs> illuminating? Okay. All right, Scarlet Macaw got a little, a little, um, he's funny. He's funny, okay? He's all jokes for you. Card number one or card number two? If you chose card number two, this is really about clearing bonds, clearing ties, moving forward, and not dealing with energy that drains you. Archangel Michael comes in, and Archangel Michael, for me, clears your energy. But he's also the cord cutter for me. Like, when I do cord cuttings, I work with Archangel Michael and other energies, but mainly Michael. Because it's a very clear-cut energy, and he's very strong. The color red is going to be important for you because you're working with your root chakra. That will also help with your anxiety and with the financial issues that you, you are having. What does the Scarlet Macaw and Archangel Michael want Leo to know? There is a trip. So here is a you or another energy. I feel like the page could be a child. But this is like starting fresh. Like we're going to start over. We're going to wipe the slate clean. We're going to be fresh. Um, the hangman comes out. This energy is about illumination and surrender. We're like finally understanding that we have to move on. We have to go. There is something of a trip coming up this month. Okay, there is a trip, whether it's to go see family or it's to go together. But we are shutting things down, possibly with someone too, after this trip. This is like a huge transformation for you. 
I want to get more information on what does the Ten of Cups signify for Leo. What is this happy family, this trip? We got the sun. Illumination, right? I feel like you're going to start seeing things different. Um, the birds, okay? Communication is going to clear up about a commitment. I feel like you're going to commit to something because you're ready. You're committed to your happiness. You're committed to move forward. You're ready to move on, Leo. You're not playing games anymore. What is the energy here? What do we have here for this energy? Round and round. There's a situation. I want you to pay attention to the 25th because I have the ring as 25 and round and round as 25. Okay? So that energy right there is telling me that on the 25th, is there anything major happening? No, I don't have anything in my notes. On the 25th, Leo, there is a major decision that you've been going over and over in your head. And you're like, you know what? I'm done dealing with this and I'm ready for something new. And because you're ready for something new, you release this situation, you start focusing on what makes you happy with the Ten of Cups where you feel complete, and you shut the other stuff down, and you're like, nah, I'm not even going to have this conversation with you anymore. I'm going to move forward, all right? Very beautiful energy coming in for you. Card number two, I'm telling you, they got your spirit guide coming in. You have an earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, or somebody who's very business savvy, okay? And that is what the, pa the, the parrot or the scarlet macaw wants you to know. There's this energy coming in that's like, look, Leo, you could have it all. But you choose, you dreaming small, Leo. You know, you're thinking small, but you could have all of this, right? And they're like, you know, all you got to do is break out of your mold. You got to just try something new. Try something different. And it's yours. It's all yours, right? So let's go. Quick communication, travel. We're going to go see somebody, and it's going to be good, all right? And here we are. Coming in hot, okay? There is like... Coming in, they're going to meet you halfway, they got you, because they are done being stuck. There's an individual who feels like they can't be with you, anxiety is very high on this end, and they want to be there. The 8th is going to be very important also, I'm looking at the numbers, and the ninth. On the 25th for card number 1, I feel that there's an ending of a cycle. You decide to really complete the cycle, you're good, and you're ready to go. Card number two with the double eight and the knight of wands, this is a very quick decision. Like, you're moving forward, you're not looking back, and you're happy. Let's get some clues on this knight of wands. This could be your energy or someone else's, but you are freeing yourself from a situation. You're done. No knight in shining armor needed. You got yourself. Look, the sun. Yeah, on the ninth. The DJ. We changing the record, baby. What else? And the web on the 23. Now, the 23rd is important because Jupiter goes direct in the sign of Pisces, right? So I feel like it's going to be important. I do feel like we're completely changing our narrative and we're moving forward. With the web design, there's a lot of stuff coming out for online communication. And you are moving forward, okay? Moving forward. It's a very beautiful energy. Let's see. What else does the Scarlet Macaw have for beautiful Leo? Sagittarius energy, you have to move calmly. This is something that you're having to learn is the patience on how to be, you know, well put together, but yet go after what you want. Even, even when you know you've been betrayed, you're like, okay, I know I need to think about these things. I have to move forward, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. Let's get one more Oracle for card number two. I'm so sorry. I can hear people talking outside. It's driving me crazy. Um, you're between worlds. That Eight of Wands is like um, you want to get there really, really fast. You want to get somewhere, but you feel stuck. And that's why the Knight of Wands is saying, look, we got to change the music. We got to change the song. We got to interconnect. We got to meet up with friends. We got to change this because we're in between worlds and we know who we are. We know where we're supposed to be. Our man with the coin is waiting for us. The money, the offer, the opportunity is coming. We've got to go. So, now we are at the second carob. This is the carob of pentacles, the king, the carob of disc. This energy is about being very solid, very Taurus-like energy coming in with the uh, bull body, okay? The bull with wings. So, let's see here. What does the Nahuali deck want us to tell you about this energy, Leo? What energy can we harness? Ooh, the jaguar. Okay, I was just studying about this. Um, number 22 is going to be very important for you. So like 222 two, two is going to be important. Um, three, 
no, 23, 23 is going to be important. The 23rd is going to be important. And the 22nd, okay? So 8, 9, 22, 23, 25. So with this energy as a jaguar, this is the first epic, right? And I'm going to look it up and give you more information. But this is the, the beginning. This is a lot of big cat energy, you know? You are strong. You're moving forward. You got the world in your hands. And I feel like this eclipse, this eclipse is bringing you into an alignment because you see the darkness and you see the sun, right? So what the jaguar shows up, this is power, authority, courage, Okay, the jaguar is the most mysterious, most revered, and most successful predator in the Central and South America, the heart of the, mi the mountain, the first epic known as the jaguar's son. This is great, powerful work on the subliminal conscious level. You are meant to be an authority. You are supposed to be in power. Learn to be more sensitive to the spoken language of others and pay attention to how things match up. A person could tell you the best thing, but their actions tell you another. And the jaguar is a big cat, and the big cat can see in the darkness, okay? This is telling you, you, this person, this situation, this job might be wah, 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 and doing something else. And you just know it, Leo. You're like, okay, all right. Here's another trip. The fortune, which is the wheel of fortune, to the nine of cups, to the three of wands. Nothing but success here. Leo, get on the choo-choo train, okay? Come and ride this train, right? This is great energy. It's moving you. You got that Jupiter energy with the nine of cups going to the three of wands, going to the fool. Like, how much better can it be? How much greater can it be? But you got to cut something off or someone off in order to pass go and collect $200. And look what happens here. This card just fell out. The Queen of Cups. So this Princess of Cups offer, this little thing that got you that little victory turned into something big right here. Okay? So you have this Queen of Cups energy. You're ready. You're manifesting. You're getting your Ace of Cups. Some of you are falling in love. Some of you are getting new jobs, moving. Things are looking really, really good for you. There's something about being near water, taking spiritual baths. If you can get to the beach, I would go, especially to get you next to the other part of the world. You're clearing, you're cleansing, and you're making things happen. If the Queen of Cups could talk, what would she say? The rider. Something new is coming, okay? Oh my goodness, I hate when my cards stick together. Okay, that's not... Let me shuffle them real good. They are like all sticking together and I can't get them out. I'm going to take from the top. Look, information from a snake that was blocking you. So there are some Leos out there that there is an energy, a friend, an ex-lover, whatever. They're blocking you from moving forward. And you're going to know it. And I want to say like by the 21st. There will be communication with someone and you're going to feel the vibe is off. The 23rd or the 25th, you're going to do something to get rid of that energy. But you can feel it coming. Like, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Yeah, you know it. Leo, that's the thing about a Leo. Leo will ask questions but already knows the answers. We're just like that. We're like, oh, really? Is that what you did? What did you do next? What is this snake trying to do? It could be a Cancer Scorpio Pisces, okay? You are the best thing that ever happened to you. Huh, go easy on yourself. Take a drink. I sure will. That's what I've been doing all day. What, did the, what is the snake doing, though? They see you going through some tough stuff, and they're not helping you. They're, they're blocking you. They're blocking you from this new beginning, whether this is your friend, your lover, whatever, and it's time to cut them off because they're blocking you from your blessings. When you are aligned with the wrong individuals, your money will look funny. I'm going to keep saying it until people realize that, okay? So the fool comes in. He's like, look, baby. Come on, Leo. Come on, Leo. You got this, Leo. You got this. And Leo's like, all right, let's try it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it, okay? So what does this new beginning mean for Leo? We're going to take your love and go. We're going to take that Ace of Cups. We're going to move forward. We're going to make it happen. Wait, that's that card's over there. And we're leaving this behind. We're leaving it behind. No more sadness. No more being. No more dealing with the, with the devil energy. We're cutting it off like the King of Swords. And we're moving on. We're not taking our time with that anymore. We're going to accept the Ace of Cups. We're going to take that offer. And we're going to go. 
There is a lot of traveling for you in the next few months, possibly into next year. Another energy that I see coming in is a total cleansing before the end of the year. If you are by the ocean, if you can make a spiritual bath, it is time. Because you've got to clear yourself from this energy. There is a snake in the grass, and maybe, maybe whatever else I can make rhyme with that, but it's got to go. It, and there's no reason for it to be there. Five of Cups, what is your energy? The Eight of Wands. Someone is sad because they can't get a hold of you like they used to, Leo. Like, they used to be able to like your stuff on Instagram, maybe send you a little heart, and you're like, hey, boo, or hey, friend. No, not anymore. You ain't sending them memes. You ain't sending them pictures. Look, because you know what you want. You want the King of Pentacles. You're going towards your King of Pentacles, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. The man with the coin from the beginning of the read said, pick me because I'm not for this, okay? You're tired of getting your heart broken. You're tired of this. And you want your wishes fulfilled. And in order to get that energy to happen, you've got to put yourself first. Take that Ace of Cups. Leave behind the pain, the sorrow, the sadness. Rewrite your story. Change the record. Stop combining your energy with people who are taking, taking, taking from you. Because there's something better on the way. Okay? So, let's get some closing energies for you. And then we'll go into your finances. All right, Leo? Become a clear channel, clear, cleanse, and operate. Reach for the stars, don't give up on your dreams. Let go, let it go. Whatever it is that you're holding on that you're hoping they're coming back or you're hoping they're gonna see how much you meant to them, fuck it, go. I don't care how much you meant to them. You don't care how much you meant to them. How much do you mean to yourself? How much do you mean to your future? How much do you mean to your present? That's what matters. Okay, one last card and go with the flow. Girl, get on that boat, get in that car, leave, go get that man with the coin because that's the one that wants to invest in you, whether it's a business, whether it's in love, that's what wants to come forward for you. There's a big ending. I don't know if you're going to block somebody, but it's a big block. They've been blocking you energetically. It causes you anxiety. It causes you fear. And you're ready to move on into a new direction. You have a whole new world waiting for you, Leo. You just got to get up and go. Stop looking back. Like It's like almost like you're like holding on like barely. Like, oh, I want to let go. I'm going to let go. No, let it go and go. It's like there's nothing to hold on to anymore. All you're holding on to is the same thing that you got in the past that broke your heart and left you sad, okay? And especially if they need money. And this person or this situation, this friendship, whatever, is a soulmate energy. It is a different kind of energy that is going to make you feel way more fulfilled than what you thought you were going to be, okay? So let's look at your monty. Oh, Leo, let's see. I get so nervous. Opportunity, two of staffs. King of Cups. There's the big offer, boo. The moon. Give me one more, one more, one more. What's the outcome? With the hermit. There is a big opportunity that could lead to a huge move. All of a sudden, Leo, it's like a job offer. Some kind of big blessing is coming in. It's going to come out of freaking nowhere. You're going to take it and you're going to go. All right. Could be going with a Cancer Scorpio Pisces or the offer came from a Cancer Scorpio Pisces. Someone who knows how to dress well. This way I'm the card looks. And I feel like you're moving in a whole new direction. So let's see here. Let's look at your beautiful energy in love, Leo. What's going on in Leo's love life? What's going on in Leo's love life? This is like a real quick love read that I like to do just to kind of see like what's brewing and what's coming. Focused on our coins. Focused on our coins. Focused on our happiness. Man, Leo, you are you are on point. Point in this love read. Here's the hangman overall energy. We are ready to surrender to the divine and move forward. So I have here the nine of pentacles, right? Nine of pentacles energy. You are focused on you. You're focused on your, your money, your business, your individuality. You also love being independent, okay? Then we have the queen of pentacles here in the middle. Remember, your soulmate's over here with this coin too. He's like, boo, I got you, okay? You're like, look, I am an entrepreneur. I'm a hard worker. I, I follow my dreams because of the holly on my head. I know who I am. You, but it took you a while to get there. You've healed your heart. You're open to love. You're open to growth. You're open to development. And the answer is yes. 
The answer is yes. You have a yes because the sun is here. What are we releasing? Toxic behaviors, toxic people, toxic tendencies to go back into the cycle. We are breaking a karmic cycle. We intuitively know that now is more than the best time to let go and go. Like, we're going to let it go. We're going to let it all go. We're going to move forward and we're going to be blessed, right? May not be an easy letting go. You know, it's never too easy to let go of something. But usually what comes afterwards is great. Nine of Pentacles. What do we have here? Justice. Look, we want it to be fair. So we were, we're sitting back and we're allowing things to happen because we know that our spirit guides got our back, right? What does the Queen of Pentacles want us to know? She says, you're the world. The person coming in for you will make you the center of their world. Okay, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo possibly coming towards you. The sun said, look, the girl fool again. Let go act a fool and show everybody what we got. Now, I find it interesting that this snake is at his feet. I just noticed that. Snake is at his feet. Watch who you take on this new version of love with you, okay? Because we're trying to get rid of that snake energy. Now, what's interesting is 19 comes to a 10, right? 1 plus 9 plus another 0. So 10, 0, 100. We out. 90 to nothing. Out the door. Living our best life. The devil was tied to the energy. I want to say fake love. Because it's like the Ace of Cups. There was love at one time. And it's done. And we got sucked into this like behavior. Pay attention to the 18th, okay? The 18th could be very, very important for you. You're going to trust your intuition, Leo. You're going to go forward. I got the Queen of Pentacles again. Look, look how she's being worshipped. The Queen of Pentacles is coming in. Strong Pisces. Strong Earth sign coming towards you, okay? One more card. Look, somebody going to be mad that they lost you. It could have been you, friend. It could have been you. But you didn't you didn't say nothing. The hangman with the nine of wands. A difficult conversation is going to happen this month. The way that you move forward is by putting yourself first. And I, I see him with his hand over her mouth. You're going to have a conversation with someone who only wants to say what they want to say. And they don't want to let you speak your mind. And Leo, nah, uh A Leo will always speak their mind, okay? And we are getting rid of the devil. We're getting rid of toxic cycles. Leo, this is the month for you to move forward and make it happen. All right. Let's close this off with some oracles. Very beautiful love reading, Leo. Congratulations. Door to romance is open, okay? Give me the keys. We're looking for possibilities, okay? The angel of love is blessing you this month. What else do we got here? We're going to trust our intuition with our seventh chakra. We got strength in the house. We're stronger than that. We ain't going to settle for that stuff. And we're going to get over this broken heart. What else do we got here? And we're going to make our house a home. Beautiful energy, Leo. I absolutely love it. I think that whoever is going through a really big heartbreak, once we flush this energy down the toilet because that's where it belongs, Shabai, you're going to feel much better. Make sure that you're doing your clearings, cleansings, road openings, love baths. Be open to new opportunities because you got someone coming through for you. And I want to say that this energy is a very like caring, loving energy, but the sex will still be great, Leo, because I know that's like a big thing for you. All right. I hope you guys have a beautiful, beautiful month. If you're sitting to read, hit me up on my link tree and go follow me on Instagram. Take care.